Hi guys, I'm Matt Hetherington from mhtabletennis.com and in today's coaching video tutorial I'm going to be looking at the long fast serve. So I'm going to look at three different areas. First I'm going to look at why we might use a long fast serve in a match. Secondly we're going to look at some of the mechanics of the long fast serve. And then thirdly we're going to look at some of the qualities that you need to have in your long fast serves in order to make them effective in matches and some potential training tools and uh, little tricks that you can use to make sure that your long serves are of the necessary quality to be able to put you at the advantage in a point. Okay, so I'm going to start off by explaining some reasons why you might use a long fast serve. There are a few good reasons you might choose to use a long fast serve in a match. Uh, one of them may be that your opponent has a very good short game and has a very good handle on your short serves. That will be a good time to throw in a long fast serve. Even if perhaps they've started getting comfortable and used to you serving short, short all of the time, and sometimes they might be getting them to prepare for that return early, that would be a good chance to use some longer fast serves or even half long serve variations. A second good reason to use the long fast serve is simply to catch your opponent by surprise. If you have a very fast and deep and high quality long fast serve, it's a good opportunity to really take time away from your opponent and see if you can get a passive response out of them. And if you can get a passive response, that gives you the chance to initiate and control the table first. A third good reason you might serve long and fast in a table tennis match is if your opponent has a more passive playing style. So we're talking about players who have weaker first openings or maybe are less comfortable in topspin situations along with blockers and also some defensive players. Okay, using a long serve variation may cause some errors or again, passive responses that give you the opportunity to open first and then therefore dominate the start of the rally. Okay, so there are three useful tips for why you might use a long fast serve. Of course, there are other reasons, but those I feel are the three main reasons you might consider to use a long fast serve. Now we're going to look into some of the mechanics of the long fast serve and then move on to some qualities that we need to have built into our long fast serves to make them effective. Let's look at some of the mechanics of long fast serves. So much like the rest of your serves, they revolve a lot around relaxation and then tightening through the contact point. With the short serves, you're trying to generate a lot of grip and the trajectory is driven by your body, but the amount of spin that you put on the ball usually slows the ball down. So you're focusing your acceleration on gripping the ball and creating rotation. With the long fast serve, you need to change that a little so that you're using more of your body weight acceleration to create momentum forward into the ball, therefore creating the long service motion and the speed that you need to create a long fast serve. So rather than gripping the ball and creating more uh, kind of thin angles, as Sam Walker said in his ghost tutorial video that I did with him, creating that thin contact, which is more useful on a short spinning serve, we want to create a little bit more of a flat contact. Not flat in that we get no spin, but just not as fine. Okay, so when we're preparing for a long fast serve, and a good place to start was with the pendulum. When we're bringing our body weight backwards, we really want to push into that ball more. So there's a lot more rotation from the waist into the ball contact, and we're really trying to drive our weight into that first contact to the table so that we can get the ball to go long and fast. There are a couple of things that we really need to focus on with the long fast serve for basics. First one, the first bounce needs to be closer to you on your side of the table. Okay, we don't want to project the ball too close to the net because then it's going to end up in the net. Okay, so first bounce closer to you. And then also we need to make sure we're contacting the ball low in the toss. Okay, if we're serving from up here or contacting the ball up here, it's very hard to get a fast low trajectory going forward. Okay, from here we're contacting the ball down. Okay, if we have the ball dropping down here, we can push our body weight into the ball and forward. So first bounce closer to you, contact low, okay, and then driving body weight into the ball. Those are the three main areas we want to focus on. 
So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some qualities that we need to have in our long fast serves and show you some different examples. So what kind of things would you need to think about when you're serving long in order to make your long serves most effective? Well, the first thing that you want to make sure is that the ball is actually long. Okay, and we need to think more about depth. So the deeper on the table that we can get it, the better. Okay, so close towards the back line of the table is where we should be aiming. Or if we're using long fast serves that we want to break the table, making sure that we get good wide angles and that we get the opponent taken off balance a little bit. But mainly that we're just getting good depth on the ball. And that comes from that body weight transfer and rotation. So you're building forward speed into the ball, which helps project the ball deeper. Okay, and talking about speed, the second thing we want to focus on if we're doing long fast serves is that they are fast. Okay, a long, slow serve that's intended to be fast is not going to be very effective. It's going to give your chance, opponent the chance to open up first, and then you're going to be playing defensively at least for the first phase of the point. Okay, you need to build up the speed through your body, make sure you're getting that tightening action on the contact, and then that you're keeping the ball low so that you can get maximum speed forward into the ball. The third thing that we have to consider is that our long fast serves are a surprise. We don't want our opponent to know when we're going to serve long and fast, otherwise they have more time to prepare. And a lot of that comes down to avoiding having any action changes with our serve, or physical tells that show the opponent when we're going to serve long and fast. So if you think about someone who serves maybe a pendulum like this, and then when they serve long and fast, they bring their racket back more, that gives it away too much. I have too much time to know that, I'm, that the other person is going to serve long and fast. So we need to make sure that our technique and service stays relatively the same, when we're changing between serves, and especially for the long fast serve, we don't want to give away anything, even if it's you putting your tongue in your cheek like this, or throwing the ball a little bit higher, we don't want to give away any information that tells our opponent that we're going to do a long fast serve. And as I mentioned before, it's very important to think about placement. Okay, There are areas on the table where our opponent might be weaker, that we can expose with a long fast serve, Potentially, if they have a weaker backhand, we could get them wide in the backhand corner or maybe even across here, if this is a weaker spot. Also into the elbow or wide to the forehand. We need to think about where the most effective placement of the long fast serve is going to be because we don't want our opponent to make a strong attacking stroke on that ball. So we don't want to put it in their comfort zone. So those are four things that you consider. Uh, as qualities that are important for a long fast serve in a match and those are going to help you make your long fast serves more effective. So now I'm going to demonstrate some of those points and show you some tips on how you can work on those. A good way that we can start off by looking at the depth of the serve is to grab a towel or an item of clothing and put it on the table so that we have to serve past that item. Okay, so I put the towel down with a small gap at the end I want to make sure I'm getting all of my long fast serves into that gap and this is a good way to practice the depth of the serve and we really want to focus on building acceleration through the contact but also in using the waist and the core to accelerate into the ball and that helps drive it further towards that baseline of the table. The second quality we want to look at building is speed. And this can be as simple as getting an empty box and putting it right at the edge of the table. And we're going to try and build up speed so that we can knock the box off the table using our serve. Okay, so if you serve too slow, it's not going to have any impact on the box at all. We have to build up that acceleration to try and put some forward force into the ball. And that's going to help us knock the box off the end of the table. Third important quality, of course, is the element of surprise. 
We don't want our opponent to know when we're serving long. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that there's not too much difference in our service action between when we serve short and when we serve long. So I always find it's good to pair your long fast serves with short serves that you use in matches. So I'll give you three examples, a pendulum, a hook serve, and a backhand serve. And because we serve in lots of two in table tennis, it's really handy to have these pairings. So let's say I use a short pendulum serve. I can also use a long fast variation of this serve by adding more acceleration and more forward momentum. Okay, with the hook serve, I can do a top spin kick or I can flatten my racket out and serve long and fast. Then if I come around for my backhand, I can serve a short variation or I can serve long and fast. The fourth area, of course, that I spoke about was placement. And a great thing that you can use for this is to find a broken ball around your house or at the table tennis club and use it for target practice. Now, using a target that's small like a ball really helps with your precision. So we can put that in areas that we want to target in matches. So for example, if I was serving a lot of short serves down the line, I could pair them with a long fast serve to the corner against the right hander, which would be wide to the forehand or out to the forehand corner. Okay, so while I'm doing these serves, I can make small adjustments to try and pinpoint and really improve the consistency of my placement. That should be about all you need to know to get started on really improving your long fast serves. So you can look across those three areas, when and why we might use a long fast serve, some mechanics and mechanical pointers of what we need to do to ensure our serves are good quality. And then I think most importantly is making sure those four characteristics are really at the highest standard possible. And we can use some of those tools that I've just demonstrated to you in order to improve and work on those areas of the long fast serve. So good luck working on those. As always, comments below or emails to me at mhtabletennis at gmail.com. I'm always happy to give you guys my time to help you if there are things that you're not understanding or are finding difficult, not just with this video, but with, with all of my tutorial videos. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please give me a subscribe. There is more content coming, not just on serve, but later on down the road on other techniques and on drills that you can focus on to improve your game. Okay, thank you guys for joining me again.